I am ready to hand things over to you, Kyle and Dawn, for Bridging the River Why, the Come Back to Me Braille series. Thank you, Amy. Welcome, everybody, to our second of five parts in the Come Back to Me Braille series. So we are refreshing our Braille skills. And today we're talking about bridging. We're going to uh, open things up real fast with a poll. Have you seen the movie The Bridge on the River Kwai? So this is a, I think, 1957 film, which is about uh, prisoners of war who are conscripted to build a bridge. And it is a sort of a tragedy of the first caliber. And it uh, sounds a little bit like the title of our webinar today, which is why we're asking, have you seen the movie, The Bridge on the River Kwai? Answer one is yes, answer two is no. There is no wrong answer. <laughs> And I will go ahead and end the polling at 75% and share the results. And Kyle, 78% of our viewers today have not seen the movie, while 22% have. And me being a classic movie buff, I'm going to have to check this one out because I would have had to put no as well. Like I said, it's, a, it's sort of a tragedy. So get ready for some twists and turns. The reason that I bring it up is really uh, because it's good, but also because it sounds like the title of our webinar today, which is Bridging the River Why. Uh, so real, real fast, I'm Kyle DeJute. My title at the American Printing House for the Blind is Braille Trainer. And I'm here today with our fellow traveler, Dawn Edens. You want to Hello. introduce yourself? I'm Dawn Edens. I'm a um, digital textbook um, transcriber and also a certified Braille transcriber. And to give a physical description of myself, um, I have blonde hair, it's kind of pulled back in like a bun, um, earrings, and then I always say a bright smile to welcome all of you. Thanks, Dawn. Uh, let me draw attention one more time to the fact that I used a lot of hairspray to hold up my short brown hair faux hawk today and my big glasses uh, on my white woman's face are catching some reflections from the window and maybe some construction noises from outside. Bridging is why we're here. But what, what is bridging in UEB? Thank you. <laughs> bridging in UEB refers to the circumstance where a symbol, a braille symbol that represents two or more letters in braille spans one, two or more parts of a word. So we're talking about maybe a prefix and a base word a contraction that includes letters both in the prefix and in the base word. Or bridging could, dis, could refer to a symbol that whose letters bridge both one syllable and another syllable. So that's what bridging is in UEB. There are a couple of UEB rules specifically about bridging, and we're going to talk about a few specific ones today, the first of which deals with compound words. The literal uh, language of the rule says, and we are going to read this word for word because there is nothing quite so important as a close reading of the rules that we're trying to follow. Do not use a group sign, a contraction, which would bridge the words which make up an unhyphenated compound word. So for example, I'm, uh, they're the word egghead. I'm going to let Dawn talk this one through. Yeah, egghead is the first compound word that we're going to see which one has the correct transcription for it. So the first option, it has EG and then GH as a contraction and then EA as a contraction and then the D by itself. And then the second option, we have E and then the GG contraction, then the H then the EA contraction, and then the D by itself. Which of those would you all think would be the correct? Oh, I'm sorry, I cut out. The, tran the correct transcription for the word A head. It's the second one. Uh, what we don't want to tell our reader is that we're dealing with, how would you even say with the GH, maybe a, a good head? 
Mm -hmm. We need to leave that H separate so that we are not bridging the two words that make up the unhyphenated, right? No hyphen, compound word, egghead. The second word we're going to discuss is flea ridden. And we're going to give you two transcriptions of that word to let, and you all decide which one is the correct one. So the first option we have is F L E, and then the A R contraction, and then the I D D, and then the E N contraction for flea ridden. Then the second option we offer is F L, and then the E A contraction, and then R I D D, and then the E N contraction. Which of those would you all think would be the correct option for the word flea ridden? It's the second one where our word flea and our word ridden are not bridged together with the contraction AR. Though AR is a strong group sign, this rule overrides that because the transcription fleer idden uh, does not make the meaning of the word clear. In fact, significantly obscures the meaning of the compound word flea ridden. You are ridden or riddled with fleas. This poor little puppy that we have a picture up of is sopping wet, standing in a bathtub, getting some sort of flea treatment. They are flea, no AR contraction, ridden. One more. And the next one we have compound word is storeroom. And the first transcription that we offer for the word storeroom is that it has the ST contraction, then the OR, then ER contraction, and then OOM. And then the second transcription for the word storeroom, we have the ST contraction, and then no other contractions, it's just the word O-R-E-R-O-O-M. And which of those would you all think was the correct transcription of the word storeroom? Yes, it's the second one, which leaves our two words clearly separate, even though they're making up one word. So our store and room is an unhyphenated compound word, and we must not use a contraction that bridges the two words store and room. Yeah, I want to remind you about references, the rules of UEB so that you can steep yourself in their specific wording are available from the UEB page on ICEB's website. Let's move on to our next rule about the aspirated H. And what do you mean by aspirated, Kyle? Thank you for asking. We're talking about aspirated in this case in a linguistics context. So an aspiration is an audible breath that accompanies or comprises a speech sound. Thank you, Miriam Webster. So it's the sound of in, for example, house. Now, these are some examples of aspirated H's in English. It's true that the word English includes an H, but it actually combines with the S to make an SH sh sound and isn't that puff of air from the back of our throat, which is going to define our aspirated H for this rule. So the H in English is quite different from the H of house and Amelia Earhart. And the ever so classic in so many of our pronunciation tables, hat. That's what we mean by an aspirated H, house, air, heart, and hat. The specific rule from rules of UEB says, do not use the strong group signs for CH, GH, SH, TH, or WH. So all those group signs that have an H as their second part of two letters, or the strong contraction for THE, the, when the H is aspirated. And the first word we're gonna um, give you all a transcription of to see which one is trans transcribed correctly for the aspirated H is the word knighthood. And the first transcription of that, we have the K-N-I and then a G-H contraction, then a T-H contraction, and then the O-O-D. The second transcription we have is K-N-I, then just a G-H contraction, and then T-H-O-O-D. 
which of those would you all think would be the correct transcription for an aspirated H for the word knighthood? It's the one that doesn't tie the H into a contraction. So knighthood, where the TH is not contracted. Uh, that keeps us from giving the incorrect uh, impression that the word is nighthood. Super confusing. Knighthood with no TH contraction because the TH contraction bridges the two parts of the word. And the next word is Shanghai. And on this one, it is a capital SH and then AN and then um, GH contracted. And I'm sorry, the SH in the word for Shanghai was also contracted in this one. So I'm, let me start over on that word, I'm sorry. The first one is SH contraction with a capital S and then AN and then the contraction for GH and then AI. And that's the first transcription. The second transcription is just the contraction for the SH, which is capitalized, and then lowercase for ANGHI. Which of those would you all think would be the correct transcription for the aspirated H for Shanghai? It's the transcription that keeps the H from being tied up in a contraction when the H is aspirated. It's not uh, Shang, sh sh I, don't, I don't know how we would pronounce it if we didn't aspirate the H. The H says huh, and so it can't be part of the GH contraction. Are you ready for a poll? I hope so, because here comes one. Which of the following is the correct contracted UEB transcription of the word flathead? Choice A is cap cap F L A T H contraction E A contraction D. Choice B is cap cap F L A T H E contraction A D. Choice C is cap cap F L A T H E A contraction D. And last but not least, cap cap F L A T H E A D. No contractions. And while you're thinking that over of those choices of which you think would be the correct way to braille that word, I'm going to go ahead and end the polling here at 53% and share results. And here they are, Kyle. So 86% felt that C is the correct way to uh, braille that word. So I'm eager to know, are we right? Rock and roll students, you're totally right. We can use the EA contraction, it's there sandwiched between letters, and we cannot use the TH contraction because that H, which is aspirated in flathead and also is part of a separate word in a compound unhyphenated word, it just can't be all tied up in a contraction. It cannot be doing that. So choice C is our correct answer with cap cap F L A T H E A contraction D. A general thought on rules of UEB and the principles of the Unified English Braille Code. Generally use a group sign. You generally have permission to use group signs. This can be helpful when searching the rule book because it allows us to search for an exception to permission instead of looking for permission to use a group sign. The rules of UEB are written to give us exceptions to what is a general permission and encouragement to contract. So we are encouraged to contract. When we study the rules, we are looking for exceptions to our contraction permission. Next rule about bridging concerns the EA contraction. Here's what the rule says. Don't use, I'm sorry, do not use the lower group sign for EA when the letters EA bridge a prefix and the remainder of the word. And this one, we have the word preamble. And we're gonna give you two different transcriptions and you wanna let us know which one you think is correct. So the first transcription we have PR and then the EA and then 
M B L E and the EI contraction on that one. The second one we have just the words spelled out, no contractions. So P R E A M B L E. And that is the word for preamble. And which of those do you all think is the correct transcription? Oh, yes. It's that totally uncontracted word. This makes alarm bells go off in my head sometimes when I see a word that has no contractions at all. And I think oh, there must be some way that I can condense it. But in fact, in this case, there is no way we can condense this word. There is no appropriate contraction of the word preamble because pre is the prefix, just like the word prefix has pre as its prefix. And amble is the sort of base word. Uh, this preamble is a sort of things to say before we go on an amble through the rest of the document. And the next word is readjust. And we're going to give you two transcriptions of that one. The first one is R, E-A contraction, and then D, J, U, and then S, T. And then the second transcription we're going to give you is R, E, A, D, J, U and then ST contraction. And which of those do you all think is the, oh, there is a third one, she tricked me. <laughs> so there is a third one on this. The third transcription we have is the R and then EA contraction, D and then the word just contracted. Which of those do you all think is the correct transcription for the word readjust? It's not the first one because that EA bridges the prefix re and the base word adjust. And it's not the last one because we cannot use the alphabetic word sign just when it's right up next to those other letters uh, because it can't be a word sign at that point. It's just the letter J. So instead of transcribing readjust here, we've transcribed reach. Thus, our correct transcription is R, E, A, D, J, U, and the S, T contraction. The next word we have is reappoint. In the first transcription for this word, is we have it as R and then EA and then PPO and then IN contracted and then T. The second option we have is R E A P P O IN contracted and then the letter T. Is there a third one, Kyle? Okay. <laughs> and that's it for these, just the two options. And it's the one that does not have our EA that bridges a prefix and a base word contracted. That's a no-no. So R-E-A-P-P-O-I-N contraction T. Are you ready for a testing poll? Okay, good, because here it comes. Poll number three is asking us which of the following is the correct contracted UEB transcription of the word reaction? Choice A is cap cap R E A contracted, C T I O N contracted. Choice B is cap cap R E A C T I O N contracted. Choice C is cap cap R E A C T I O N. So A uses both the EA and the TION contraction for reaction. Choice B uses only the TION contraction. And choice C uses no contractions at all. We've had a few of our participants today drop their options into the chat box. Some people dropping theirs into the chat um, are with letter B. And what I can share is I will stop the polling at a little bit over 61% and share out that those uh, folks that put their answers in the chat window are in agreement with the um, majority of people who dropped in 90% dropped in that letter B was the correct choice. It is indeed. In the word reaction, our prefix is re and our base word is action. So it would be against the rules of UEB to use the EA contraction in this case. It would bridge a prefix and a base word. 
There are no rules prohibiting the use of the T-I-O-N contraction in this word. So choice B is our correct one. Cap, cap, R-E-A, no contraction. C, T-I-O-N contraction. Oh my gosh, there's another one. Mm -hmm. So here is our fourth poll for today. This is another question about contraction. Which of the following is the correct UEB transcription, contracted UEB transcription of the word, all capitals, spread eagle? Choice A is cap, cap, S, P, R, E, A contraction, D, E, A contraction, G, L, E. Choice B is S, P, R, E, A contraction, D, E, A contraction, G, L, E. Choice C is cap, cap, S P R E A contraction, D E A G L E. And last but not least, choice D is S P R E A contraction, D E A G L E. So A uses the E A contraction both within spread and at the beginning of eagle and is double capped. Choice B uses the E A contraction in spread and eagle. Choice C uses the EA contraction just in spread and is double capped. And choice D uses the EA contraction in spread. Our friends are a little bit slower in answering this one. It takes a little bit more thinking. This one's a little um, tricksy. And, and considering. So some um, are have putting their answers in the chat window as well. And I will go ahead because I'm eager to know I'm going to share out the results. And so 50 or 61 percent of our viewers today believe that the correct answer is A. I don't know. What is it, Kyle? The correct answer is A. The EA contraction can be used both in spread and in eagle. There are no rules prohibiting the use of the EA contraction in the word spread eagle. Now, choice B has the same contraction, but it's missing the capitalization that would make it a completely accurate representation of our print. So choice A is cap, cap, S, P, R, and the E, A contraction sandwiched between letters that does not bridge the parts of a compound word, nor a prefix and a base word. Then our letter D, and the EA contraction, which in the word spread eagle is sandwiched between letters and does not bridge either the parts of a compound word, so that would be spread and eagle, nor does this EA at the beginning of eagle span a prefix and a base word. So we are all golden for answer choice A. Here is a request for you. What do you want to know about UEB contractions? We're here, we're thinking about future webinars. Uh, if you have a specific rule of UEB that you would like to see discussed or a specific word and how it's contracted, even if it's been troubling you and your team, that kind of thing we would love to know about, please write it in the chat here and or email it to Dawn at D-E-A-D-E-N-S at A-P-H dot org. Uh, and you can't help but see the contract, the EA in Don's email is, uh, arises some interesting transcription question for us. If I were to transcribe Don's email address, I would in fact use the EA contraction because her last name is Edens. So D-E-A-D-E-N-S, that's the beginning of the email address. It doesn't span to parts of an unhyphenated compound word or a word that's mushed together, two words that are mushed together in a web address. So I would indeed use the EA contraction mm -hmm. here in Deedens at APH.org. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I got you guys way ahead. All right. Thank you. I saw a couple in the, in the chat and uh, I'm sure that Don will catch some good emails with questions about UEB and what you would like to see further instruction on. Yes, I encourage you all, if you have any questions, definitely write me. I'm open and if I don't know the answer, I will definitely pass on to Kyle and we'll definitely get back to you all on those. For sure. All right, let's talk about braille order. If you're a transcriber, I think I can already feel you going, oh, do we have to? 
What is Braille order? In short, it's this. The order of symbols laid out here in the screen, in the picture on the page is Braille order. So this is the alphabet and then a set sequence of Braille symbols or Braille cell arrangements after that. So this order of the 63 potential ways to arrange the dots, uh, the six dots in a Braille cell, that's Braille order. Uh, so line one, we're going to walk through how a little bit of how Braille order is constructed. Line one is the first 10 letters of the alphabet. Line two is those first 10 letters with dot three added. Line three is the first 10 letters, the first 10 cell configurations with both dots three and six added. Line four is the first 10 constructions or 10 letters with dot six added. Line five is those first 10 cells uh, sort of bopped on the head. So they are down in the lower part of the cell. And then line six is a set order of braille cell constructions. Line seven is a set order of braille cell constructions that all happen on the right side of the cell. Dots four, five, six. And where do we use braille order, Kyle? So one of the places that it's used is in Appendix 3 of the rules of UEB. So Appendix 3 is the very last part of our oh-so-important primary source rules of UEB. And it's simply a listing of symbols with uh, Unicode information, a print name, and some references from the rule where you, or sorry, references from the rules, where you can find information about that symbol that's listed. And that long list of Braille symbols, some of which are multiple cells long, is all in Braille order. So if you are not even searching like we did last time in the rules of UEB using ASCII characters to search for Braille symbols, even if you don't do that, you can navigate Appendix 3 by looking things up, referring to that Braille order chart because the symbols are listed according to that. Another place that we use Braille order is on special symbols pages. Braille formats tells us this page lists symbols found in the volume that may be unfamiliar to the reader. This includes symbols such as shape indicators and transcriber defined indicators. So our special symbols page is a resource for the Braille user to get more information about infrequently used or very specifically de uh, defined symbols in the volume that they're reading. Speaking of special symbols pages, let's go a little bit more in depth. Oh, I did see a question in the chat. Uh, the web address for the rules of UEB Appendix 3. Appendix 3 is part and parcel with the rules of UEB. So if we go to the ICEB website, and go to the UEB, the Unified English Braille page. The ICEB website is icEB.org. Then the UEB page is icEB.org slash UEB. When we go into, I'm going to stay online, so I'm going to use the linked PDF of the rules of Unified English Braille. And I think if I scroll to my, the last listing in my table of contents, I can click on that. And it links me down to that part of the document, which is Appendix 3, uh, Symbols List, arranged according to Braille order. And the Symbols List looks a little bit like that, where we have the Braille symbol, the print equivalent, the Unicode, the, sorry, the name of the actual symbol that's over here, and then uh, where it's used and a reference from the rules. That's Appendix 3 of the rules of UEB. Let's talk about special symbols pages. Here's a sample special symbols page. This one comes from a UEB with Nemeth transcription. So we've got some Nemeth symbols defined in here. Though most Nemeth symbols, right, we don't have to define in a special symbols page. That's part of the Nemeth code rules is that we don't get carried away defining Nemeth symbols. So our heading is, all caps, special symbols used in this volume. And we got to terminate our capitals passage. 
Our first listing is the dot locator for quote mention, and that's dots four six and the full cell. That's going to go before each of our symbols that we're defining here because the dot locator for mention gives us a reference point for where the symbol, where the cell sorry, where the dots after the dot locator for mention are located, whether they're way over to the right of the cell or way up or way down, the dot locator for mention gives us a spatial reference for where the dots after it are falling within the Braille cell. After the dot locator for mention, our first listing is a three cell Braille symbol, dot four, dots four, six, one, two, six. That's the opening transcriber's note indicator. What I really wanna draw your attention to here is that the symbols on this special symbols page are arranged in braille order in reference to lines six and line seven of braille order, which are I've pulled up on the screen now. So line six uh, starts with dots three, four, and then line seven starts with dot four. So our first two symbols on the special symbols page start with dot four. Then after we're finished with all of our symbols that start with dot four, we start listing symbols that start with dots four, five. So that includes our section sign, the boldface word indicator, boldface passage indicator, and boldface terminator. Our next listing is the opening Nemeth code indicator, and that symbol starts with dots four, five, six, which is the next symbol in Braille, in line seven of Braille order. It's the next symbol in Braille order. After we're done with our four, five, six symbols, any symbol that starts with the cell four, five, six, we can then move on to our dot five symbols. So that's a little glimpse into how a special symbols page is arranged in Braille order. If I can, if I can just burden you with a little bit more looking at Braille order of a special symbols page within our dot four, five uh, symbols, we have the section sign listed before the boldface word indicator because the S, like the letter S comes before the uh, sort of lower cell A or lower cell one in braille order. Okay, that's enough braille order on special symbols pages. If you'd like to read more about special symbols pages, braille formats 2016 2.5.2e, that's where we're told to list the symbols on a special symbols page in braille order. And where is Braille order given, Kyle? So we saw it earlier at the beginning of Appendix 3. It's first given in the rules of UEB on print page 1. That chart of the seven lines that are Braille order. We made it through the special symbols page. And now we get to talk a little bit about body Braille. I have one quick question yeah. before you go there. Does the mention symbol always need to be included on a special symbols page? Um, someone has a concern because they've had an opportunity in a Braille series where it was not used. I cannot quote a specific rule that says, I can't off the top of my head quote a specific rule that says, to the best of my knowledge, a, a dot locator for mention should be Braille formats tells us it should be included on every special symbols page because it's gonna be used in every listing on the special symbols page. Um, and if I can interject a little of my own perspective, it's a weird symbol. So defining it at the beginning of every special symbols page is best practice. Thank you. So real fast and in a boring explanation way, Body Braille takes the six dots of the Braille cell and corresponds them to parts of our body. So dot one, if we were sort of facing away from the viewer, our back, which are the person looking at us, dot one would be our left fist, dot two, the left hip, and dot three, the left foot. Dot four would be the right fist, dot five, the right hip, and dot six, the right foot. But that's the boring way to explain what body braille is. Uh, Donna and I are going to rearrange our technology just a little bit so that we can explain and practice some body braille with you in a much less boring way. So let me change this over to that and change this over to that. Okay. Don't forget to stop sharing your screen.
Okay, so what we just saw on a slide, we're going to do in person now. I'm going to turn around because I'm not a slate and stylus user. Okay. I'm going to show you some body braille from the sort of Perkins perspective. This is with my left, just my left fist raised, dot one. Left hip, dot two. Left foot, dot three. When I bring everything back to the center with nothing raised, that's the empty cell or like a space, no dots raised. Dot four is my right fist raised. Dot five is the right hip. And dot six is the right foot. And you gotta stop. So if we were to do, Dawn and I together, the first couple letters of the alphabet, we would, and you're welcome to do this also. I mean, no one will judge you if you push your chair back and do a little body braille shaking along with us. Uh, the first couple letters of the alphabet are gonna be dot one A, and uh, B is gonna be dots one and two. You gotta stick that hip way out with that left fist raised. This one. C, both fists. D is both fists and your right hip. And E is a little sassy, left fist, right hip. F is both fists, left hip. G is both fists, both hips. Shake them. I think that you guys probably all know the alphabet. There's also other online resources for body braille for the alphabet. Let's do something a little more challenging and try to do line seven of braille order. So this is all going to be the right side of our bodies. And we're going to start with Dot four, right fist. Then dot four, five, right fist, right hip. Then that whole right side, right fist, right hip, right foot. Uh, then our next one is dot five, boop, just the right hip. Dot four, six, fist and foot. Then dot five, six, hip and foot. And our last symbol in braille order is dot six. You gotta stop. Let's do it one more time. So dot four, dot four, five, four, five, six, just five, four, six, bring it in, five, six, that's a hip and a foot, and six. And that's, and that's some Bobby Braille. Bobby Braille. I'm going to try to get myself put back together. There we go. Got myself put back together. There is a video on YouTube of uh, one Peggy Shoots doing a remarkable performance of Body Braille at a CNIB conference. So before we do this next poll, thank you very much for sharing that moment of Body Braille with me. I love that my downstairs neighbors are going to be like, What's she doing? And I feel so much more loose and energized for our continuing discussion of bridging. So our poll is now about Braille order. This is going to be our fifth poll for today. And the question is, which shows the symbols in Braille order? 
So answer choice A is uh, dot one, or the letter A, dots one, three, or the letter K, and dots two, three, four, six, or the contraction the. For your convenience, on the screen displayed is a picture of Braille order with its seven lines. So choice B is the letter A, contraction the, and the letter K. Choice C is uh, the contraction the, the letter A, and the letter K. Which one of these shows symbols in Braille order? while you're thinking about which answer it is that you want to put in, if you uh, have the polls that seem to uh, cover up things that you're wanting to see on the screen, I'm not sure if it helps if I move the poll box around. But nonetheless, while you're thinking about your answer of whether it's A, B, or C, I'm going to go ahead and for the sake of time, and end the polling and share out with you. Um, Kyle, 93% said letter A. Uh, we had a few people who said B, no one said C. They're totally right. Choice A, it is. So remember the very beginning of our braille order is simply the, alpha, the English alphabet uh, with one notable exception, which is the letter W. The reason that the letter W is not in what we would consider alphabetic order is that the letter W didn't get incorporated into the Braille code until after the Braille code was designed in French. And French doesn't have the letter W, so that didn't fall into the initial logical construction of the Braille cells. Okay, we're gonna do it one more time, well, two more times, I think. Here's another question about which shows the symbols in Braille order. So choice A is dot four and dots two, four, five, four, six, sorry, two, five, six. So it's the dot six or the period or a D. Choice B is the letter D, a period, and then the dot six. Choice C is the period, the D, and the dot six. Which one of those has those three symbols listed in Braille order? Remembering that our alphabet comes first and actually all of our punctuation symbols are uh, in lines five or later of Braille order. And our right foot stomp dot six is the last symbol in Braille order. I think people are thinking slowly about this one. But we'll go ahead and keep things rolling along and I will share out results at 50% uh, who have answered. So 89% of our audience answered letter B. Are we correct? Indeed. Choice B is correct. Our What we have here is a letter of the alphabet, then a punctuation, and then that dot six. So those are... That's the Braille order for those three symbols. All right, last one. And this one is not a test, but seeking your opinion. Would you like to have more instruction regarding Braille order? Yes or no? I don't know, Kyle. I, I know exactly how I would answer this. And if I was allowed as a panelist to answer the question, I would say yes in all capital letters. <laughs> So we just want to know if you want to know more about this, yes or no. And I'm going to go ahead and share. So 75% of the audience agree with me, Kyle. We need more instruction on Braille order. Well, sounds like it's time for a full Braille order body Braille, maybe, and uh, lots of practices. Yeah, I'm into that. Um, push up our nerd glasses and think about how we can give more instruction on Braille order. Thank you. All right. Earlier, we did a quick note on a uh, general principle of UEB where we often are allowed to contract. Now I'd like to do a note on some U, uh, rules of UEB or RUEB terminology. A couple of key terms we want to make sure that you walk away with a definition of. 
a symbols sequence. Now this is a hyphenated compound word. Uh, a symbol sequence is an unbroken string of braille signs, whether alphabetic or non-alphabetic, preceded and followed by space. Sometimes the, the phrase or the word symbols hyphen word is used for a symbols sequence. That's a however many braille cells that are bookended by spaces. Our next term to talk about is standing alone. And I, I suspect that a lot of people who've read up on rules of UEB are not surprised that standing alone is a key term. So the short version from rules of UEB tells us that a letter or letters sequence is considered to be standing alone if it is preceded and followed by a space, a hyphen or a dash. So something can be standing alone, even if it is not bookended by spaces, because it could be bookended, it could have before and after it a hyphen and or a dash and be standing alone. There are certain select indicators and common punctuation that are allowed to come between the space hyphen or dash and what's standing alone by being bookended by the space and or hyphen and or dash. In these definitions, please note the distinction between a letters sequence and a symbols sequence. A symbols sequence could be any string of braille signs, whether they're alphabetic or non-alphabetic. And a letters sequence is an unspaced string of letters or contractions that stand for letters, but not a period. A period is not part of a letters sequence the way the rules are written right now. So let's look at some examples of symbols sequences, because what's a symbols sequence bookended by spaces and what's not a symbols sequence affect the way some of the rules of UEB apply to certain transcriptions. One symbol sequence is the word homework, H-O-M-E and the work contraction. Another symbol sequence would be the word untidy, all spelled out with hyphens. So the transcription of that might be a grade one word indicator, U hyphen N hyphen T hyphen I hyphen D hyphen Y. That's all one symbols sequence because there's a space before the grade one word indicator, U hyphen N hyphen T hyphen I hyphen D hyphen Y, and there's a space after it. Another, sh ooh, another symbols sequence is shopping for me. So that's S-H-O-P-P. ING, the numeric indicator, and four, and then the word me. I like this one because it helps me remember that when I have any letter after the first 10 letters of the alphabet following a numeral, I don't need any grade one indicator because that M couldn't be misread as a number, unlike perhaps the, the letter E could be because it has the same construction as a five. So the symbol sequence is shopping number four, me. There's just no spaces in the midst of that. So it's a symbols sequence. Similarly, brother hyphen in hyphen law is one symbols sequence because there's a space before brother and a space after law, but there are no other spaces. It's just brother hyphen in hyphen law. So it's one symbols sequence. Our penultimate example, our second to last example, is if we had an italic passage indicator and then a capitals passage indicator and Romeo. This is actually the first symbols sequence of an example from the rules of UEB. And it is in fact one symbols sequence. There's some non-alphabetic uh, characters here, or there's some non-alphabetic indicators here, but it's all one series of unspaced braille symbols. And so too is the word fox is just, that's a symbol sequence as well. Space before and space after makes a symbols sequence. Second round of reference reminders for you. 
you can look up many words and how to transcribe them right inside the rules of UEB. So if a word that you're stumped about has been used as an example in the rules of UEB, you can go into the PDF and control F to find, type in the word that you're curious about, and it may take you right to a discussion in the rules of that word, how it's contracted and why it's contracted that way. When we are searching the rules of UEB, or any, especially rules of UEB, again, we're better off looking for a reason not to use a contraction than looking for permission to use it. When a rule applies to the way that something is pronounced, sort of like the aspirated H rule that we looked at earlier, we can look up pronunciations of words that we're not familiar with by finding audio and video clips online. A simple, maybe a, a search engine search of how do I pronounce something something will bring you up some really remarkably helpful results. What was the word you used the other day, for example, was like dash hound, dash hound? Dachshund. Dachshund. That's what it was. That one, I was like, oh yeah, okay. Interestingly, the rule for dachshund could almost be a webinar in itself because it's still considered an unhyphenated compound word because it comes from the German Dachshund. Okay. Uh, so I think we cannot use the SH contraction because it's considered that Dachs is the first word in an unhyphenated compound word and Hund, the German word for dog, is the second part of the unhyphenated compound word. But yes, dachshund is a great example of a word that has a weird pronunciation and that it's super helpful to look up online how somebody else says it. Uh, some of the cities in the UK, it's helpful to look up source video or audio of someone from the area saying the name of Chatham or uh, or similar. Just make sure, as with any online resource, that when you look up these pronunciations, they are from a reliable source, right? Someone who is actually going, who actually uses this word and actually knows it. If you're looking up the pronunciation of an organization, for example, you want to hear a person from that organization saying its name. If you're looking up the, a place name, ideally we'd like someone from that place saying the name. So we're making sure that our information about pronunciation is reliable. All right, we're gonna test a little bit of your knowledge. Poll coming up is asking, which of the following consists of three symbols sequences? Choice A is mother hyphen in hyphen law. Choice B, is all italics cap Mary hyphen cap go cap, sorry, hyphen cap round cap babes exclamation point. And choice C is cap mine is 42A where it's numeral 42 and the lower case letter A period. So let's go ahead and look at the braille transcriptions while we're here and you can think about which of these consists of three symbols sequences. So choice A is mother, the mother contraction, hyphen, the in contraction, hyphen, letters L-A-W. Choice B is italic word indicator, cap Mary, hyphen, cap go, hyphen, cap round, where go is the alphabetic word sign, and the O-U-N-D contraction is used in round, the E-R contraction in Mary and italic word indicator cap babes, exclamation point. There's a little bit of a spoiler in choice B. Mm -hmm. the, tra the transcription of choice C mm -hmm. is cap mine with an IN contraction. Space is space number four two grade one symbol indicator A period. I'm going to go ahead and end our polling and share the results. So a little bit of each um, was selected, but 43% chose C. And C is the answer. Wahoo. C is the, wahoo, the majority of you. It's a nice one. Uh, Mine is 42A, consists of three symbols sequences, because the word mine 
is bookended, is both preceded and followed by a space. And the word is, is both preceded and followed by a space. And then the number 42 with the lowercase a unspaced from it, sorry, and the period. So the 42a period is another symbols sequence. So choice C is the answer that consists of three symbols sequences. Choice B consists of two symbol sequences, and choice A is one symbols sequence. You have some homework for next time, should you choose to do it. Your homework is to transcribe the Jungle Book math practice, which is part of the materials for this webinar. Please use UEB with Nemeth or UEB math science to transcribe this small math exercise. Or do the transcription twice, once using UEB with Nemeth, and then transcribe the whole Jungle Book math practice again using UEB math science. In our next session of the Come Back to Me Braille series, we're gonna look at the Braille for this math exercise, and we're gonna look at the transcription in UEB with Nemeth, we're also going to look at a transcription of this print document in UEB or UEB Math Science, which are the same code, but just a way to distinguish. It's all UEB as opposed to it's UEB with ne Nemeth as well. We are so thankful <clears throat> to have both of you here today, Kyle and Dawn. I, it has been very educational for me and I have learned an, a, a great deal. If you are looking for those documents that have been um, talked about, they're on our web page and we will drop that link into the chat of how you can access and find those handouts. Also dropped into the chat were, <clears throat> excuse me, email addresses for both Dawn and Kyle. You might have some specific questions. I know there were one or two that were dropped into the chat window that we haven't gotten uh, an opportunity to get to. Uh, but since we are short on time, want to make sure to say, please, please come back uh, for the Please Come Back to Me Braille series next week where we are talking Jungle Books, UEB Math Science, and UEB with Nemeth next Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time.